Wildfires springing up across our state. Tonight, families are out of their homes and crews are battling the flames amid hot, dry conditions. Why? Why did it happen? Why her? That's, I can't get that out of my head. A grief that's deep and overwhelming. The fastest way to clear a room is to tell someone you have a murdered child. One year after her daughter was shot and killed, I sit down for an exclusive interview with the mom of Isabella Thalys. It feels like yesterday. It still does. While family and friends gather to celebrate Bella's life, their fight for justice is far from over. The objective here is to put this guy behind bars as long as possible. A live look at I-70 near Silverthorne tonight. The interstate is shut down to eastbound traffic there because of a wildfire that's close to the road. Traffic's being diverted over Loveland Pass. Now, crews first gave notice of the fire around 730 this evening, and there is no word yet on just how soon it might reopen. Our hot, dry conditions are doing little to help firefighters in Jefferson County. Right now, they are battling a roughly 30-acre wildfire south of Conifer. It sprang up this afternoon and grew quickly. And our CB Cotton has been out there monitoring this fire all afternoon, and uh, now there's a little bit more information. Two engines will be working on this fire overnight. The good news about the Platte River fire, that's what it's being called. No structures are threatened at this point in time, and none have been destroyed. As far as how this fire began, right now, crews and officials tell us that it believed to have started when a tree was blown over into a power line. That's according to a spokesperson from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. So far, we're told deputies went around to about 25 homes in an area of about two square miles. 14 homes had people inside. Those people were evacuated. The others were vacant. Now, the county says today's fire is a big reminder that we've officially entered fire season. The high temperatures recently and today was a little bit windy down in this area, so that has exasperated the fire danger. I know in the next week or so, you're, we're looking at multiple days in the 90s again. Um, that, of course, will worsen the fire danger. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says if the evacuation center at Conifer High School will remain open throughout the night. They're asking that those who have evacuated to check in there for record keeping, but you do not need to remain on site. We will keep you updated on this fire in the morning hours and then throughout the day tomorrow right here on Denver 7. Tonight, family and friends gathered in Denver to remember Isabella Thales. Exactly one year ago, the 21-year-old was walking with her boyfriend, Darian Simon, and his dog. A man with an AK-47 shot them both, killing Isabella. Darian survived. Well, police arrested this man, Michael Close, for the shooting, and they later confirmed the weapon used in the attack was the personal weapon of a Denver police officer who said the suspected shooter was a friend and took it without the officer's knowledge. I sat down with Isabella's mom one year after her daughter's death. The grief is profound. There's also a sense of resolve to bring her daughter's killer to justice. The month of June should be the happiest for Ana Hernandez Thales. All three of her children are June babies. That's Bella, Jacob, Lucia. Her oldest, Isabella, would have turned 22 June 8th. Her little girl who loved flowers, who would leave handwritten notes for her mom, who loved cheering at Cherry Creek High. She had the biggest heart and uh, soft-spoken, kind, very naive. Um, almost to a fault, very trusting. We were on a family trip in uh, Greece, in the island of Kefalonia, right there. She had my scarf on that day, and I just, I treasure it so much. Instead, the family is marking one year since Bella was taken from them. A man with an AK-47 rifle shot Bella and her boyfriend, Darian Simon, while they were out walking his dog. She still has the text messages she and Bella shared that morning. Okay, let me know when to come over. I'm excited. Anna remembers that day like it was yesterday. I felt like I was having a heart attack. My chest was burning. I had to sit down. I was crying. I knew. 
And I just kept crying and I just kept saying in Spanish, my daughter's dead, my daughter's dead. Anna is now preparing for her next personal struggle, sitting through a trial, watching the man who, according to court records, admitted to his friends he killed two people, and the gun he used belonged to a friend, the personal weapon of a former Denver police officer. So what would you like to see happen? What do you think would be justice? He needs to be in prison for the rest of his life. I don't want him to see the light of day, ever, and definitely not in isolation. And the man whose gun was used? I don't want anything for him. Um, as far as to him, right. plenty. I'll leave it at that. Plenty. This is where Anna comes to find peace and comfort. They call it Bella Joy Gardens. Bella's calming presence graces the side of this building, surrounded by flowers and a bench with words of love chosen by her family. And what do you think about when you're sitting at her park? Honestly, why? Because I look around and I see people walking their dogs. I see people riding their bikes at all hours of the night. And I just, I just have to wonder, and I look around at the buildings and the windows and the apartments, and I wonder why, why? Why did it happen? Why her? That's. I can't get that out of my head. Anna has found power in her grief to change Colorado gun laws. Called the Isabella Joy Thallus Gun Act, now people who lose or have a firearm stolen have to report it. She says she's not wanting to take away guns from people. She wants common sense. Do you realize what you have to do to get a dog? I would like to have my own support animal, right? There's so many hoops and so many interviews and so many things you have to jump through, but to get a gun, give me a day. For now, Anna is focused on her kids and waits. You're looking for truth. Absolutely. What mother wouldn't? Isabella and justice for my deceased daughter comes first. Justice for Darian, of course. I will fight to the bitter end for my daughter and to seek that justice to the fullest extent of the law. And I want to bring in Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. And Jen, we know the next court date's June 17th. You've been digging into new court documents in this case, so what have you uncovered? And we are learning new details about how well that former Denver police officer knew the suspect and how he had direct contact with him on the day of the shooting. This is the story of what happened in the moments before and after Isabella Tallis' murder and how a Denver police officer was caught in the middle. Here's why this matters. The AK-47 used in the murder was the personal weapon of DPD Sergeant Dan Politica. Politica has since resigned for reasons not related to this case. But at the time, he told police his longtime friend Michael Close stole the weapon. New court testimony from the lead detective shows minutes before the shooting, the suspect sent the officer a text, writing his dog, Bella, was attacked by two dogs and that he had full intentions of going back and murdering them. Ten minutes later, the suspect follows up with a voicemail saying, dude, Dan, I really f***ed up bad. I did something really bad. There's no, there's no going back from this now. Court testimony also shows Sergeant Politica didn't contact police until five hours after the shooting. Testimony also showed the sergeant was planning to take the suspect to therapy on the day of the murder. We reached out to Denver police, but they declined a request for an interview. We wanted to know why there wasn't an internal affairs investigation. DPD told us Sergeant Politica didn't violate policy because the agency doesn't have rules for how officers store their personal firearms. Politica was allowed to keep his job until he resigned in March. He retired with full benefits, but he is the subject of a wrongful death lawsuit. Anne? 
Jen, thank you. And there is much more to my conversation with Ana Hernandez Thales. You can watch that conversation in its entirety right now. Simply search Denver 7 Plus on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android device to catch this story and many others for free. Here comes McKinnon. McKinnon slides it across the box. He scores! It all started so well for the Avs tonight in Vegas. They got an early lead in a must-win game, but it all fell apart again. Oh, and it hurts. And we want to bring in Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenu. And Lionel, the Avs look so strong at the start of this series and then just finished with four losses in a row. Yeah, they did that in the series. They did that in games. They'd get the lead and then lose it. And then, yeah, it's over, guys. If you would have told me, though, the best team in the NHL, the Stanley Cup favorites, the team that started the playoffs 6-0, and would lose four straight to Vegas and get knocked out in the second round? Not going to believe it. But it happened tonight in game six. It was do or die for the Avs, and they didn't do. Avs got the best possible start. You just saw it 23 seconds in. Nate McKinnon to Devon Taves in 1-0 right at the start of the first. But again, there were turnovers and mistakes all over the place, and Vegas was up 3-2. But again, the Avs got it back. They don't quit. Berkey! was 3-3 with 17 seconds left in the second. The backbreaker came. Alex Petrangelo scored on a rebound off the boards. It was 4-3 into the third, and the Knights went on to win it 6-3 the final, and they won the series 4-2. I still can't believe it, guys. We'll have uh, many more highlights and hear from the Avalanche coming up later in sports. All right, Lionel, thank you. Tough night for sure. Tonight, the path is clear for Denver to host the MLB All-Star Game next month. Today, a federal judge rejected an effort to move the game back to Atlanta. A lawsuit accused Major League Baseball of acting unconstitutionally when it moved the game away from Georgia. The league made that move after Georgia enacted more restrictive voting laws. The All-Star Game events begin July 9th here in Denver. The game itself happens Tuesday, July 13th at Coors Field. A boil water order in Castle Pines leaving businesses high and dry. Could possibly lead to illness and that's just a deal breaker. With no clear end in sight, restaurants are bracing for a big hit. We're talking about a pretty substantial loss in revenue um, for a weekend. Minimum thousands, yeah, maybe tens of thousands. After a sizzler today, a cold front on the way, but the relief won't last long.